eat my love for me in disgusting hello and welcome to the stream today's pre-stream powder was a dirty version of tonight I celebrate our love or something like that okay uh, previously we stopped because Wolfram Alpha did a quote-unquote scheduled upgrade by which we mean that the monkeys somehow got out of their cage and did something to the site but I think we're back now and quite fortunately we do have what we had last time cut and paste here cut and pasted here rather and so I think we can just you know if we're lucky we can just re we can just re-paste this there we go and we were hoping to get an answer of zero out of this let's see what what actually happens and of course the the one problem of course is that we never ever get this to work quite right um, because it always comes into multiple uh, cells for some reason but we can fix that by doing a merge cells okay um, actually I think we're still off by one okay merge cells return if we've done this correctly this should be zero um, if we've done this incorrectly we will see a syntax error okay um, the sad thing is I'm pretty sure this was working at one point and the did I actually miss something in the cut and paste um hmm great sadness has fallen upon the land. Let's get rid of these two and see if that now compiles. Okay, so the, the problem is in one of these two lines here, and I'm going to guess it's in this line, but let's find out. Yeah. So let's see what this does. Simplify one minus that, subject to the conditions, it's the end of the simplify, Given that lat goes to pi over 2, lon goes to 0, gmst goes to ra, dec goes to 1, we should be fine. Okay, so magically now it's decided to work. Okay. I think we actually did lose a little bit of, of our work here. Um, for one thing, we're getting an extra printout that we don't... Uh, that we don't, uh, hang on one second, I think I'm going to screw something up. Um, this is in my real life, but no, I didn't. Wow, I got it right for once. Okay, uh, so it looks like we did get some more work done here that we do not have saved. Uh, we fixed the Z rotation formula. Um, Yes, we, we got down to where we said latitude is pi over 2, longitude is 0, uh, so what we should be seeing here is these numbers should be equivalent. Uh, temp 1303, did we actually, um, and they're not, and I think we decided that's because we, we flipped a sign here somewhere, and I think we said this was going to be like minus minus, but that actually, I think, only brings it to like negative 3 pi over 2, which is better, because it doesn't depend on GMST and lon. Where is this coming from? This we need to, there it is. We don't need the matrix to be printed right now. So remember correctly, this will give us a number that is, um, yeah, oh, that's a little bit different, but it's, it's, it's very close to the range of what we need, which is we've got something wrong here with this, um, with this equation. Um, so uh, either this should be three pi over two, which I don't think it should be, or this needs to be minus pi over two, which means the whole rotation matrix is actually minus pi over 2 plus gmst plus ln, which I think it actually was, and I didn't quite say it the right way when we did it earlier. Okay, come on, show me a zero. Give me a big fat zero. No. Crap. Okay. Um, now, we're ro rotating around the z-axis, and we are rotating so that... Oh, yes, I know what's wrong here. Um... Because we're trying to rotate, I thought we, we had this earlier, we're trying to rotate, um, we're trying to rotate the uh, zero hour, the x-axis, to, um, to something that's 
Okay, I think hopefully we have this here. Okay, this is getting to remind me that I maybe need to be a little bit more careful when I'm deleting stuff. Uh, we've said the zero hour, which is the uh, x-axis, needs to go to south, which is a sort of a negative 90 rotation. Um, so I think this is actually not... Um, I think this is either this or the negation. Of this is very close to what we want. And I'm kind of surprised that we kind of broke it. I thought we had this at one point correctly. Let me quickly check to see if we had... Um, yeah, because there's no way the rotation matrix is pi over 2. It, there's a 3 pi in there somewhere. Um, unfortunately, I don't seem to... Ha it's obviously, you know, if I do enough undos, we can get it. But um, but I maybe I need to save more of these things. Um, let's go ahead and give this a name from now on. We're going to call this one 2020-0204. 1740, not a very exciting name, but the name of the current timestamp. Okay, let's see if we can find um, an older notebook. Let's see if we can find one of our, restore one of our older notebooks that has the correct version in it. Not this one, not this one. So I don't think any of these, I didn't, I don't think I saved any of them, unfortunately. Um, well, user exploration. Unfortunately, I just think I've been really, really, really bad about, um, about, uh, about saving my work, which is, which is bad. I mean, um, okay, so there's nothing w really in there either. Um, okay, let me see if I can dig it up from GitHub. I mean, the whole idea behind GitHub, one of them is that you can use it as sort of a backup, but I know the Z-rotation matrix um, it's wrong here. Let's see how far up we can go and see see rot. Y this could be correct. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees. This could, in theory, be correct. Um, so let's see what we have now. Um, okay. Well, actually, I guess pi over 2 could have been correct. Um, so this is the wrong... Maybe this is it. In which case, we don't need parentheses around it. All right, and if this doesn't work, I might actually have to start doing some thinking, so don't don't tax me. Uh, no, this is worse. Okay. So was it GMST plus lon? Well, those have to be negative to get rid of the uh, 1 and 2 in there. But maybe it was... Um, Almost sure this is what we had before. Yeah. So could this be 3 pi times that? Which is the same as negative pi times that, but you know, whatever. Hmm. Okay. Now the only other problem I think we might have is... Um, we have decided that azimuth zero is north, but actually our x, y, z to spherical coordinates, yep, that's the problem. Yeah. Our x, y, z to spherical coordinates will convert the x-axis, uh, to, uh, zero, zero, and then the radius is one, but that doesn't matter. So actually, um, the positive x-axis, uh, does have to be north. Uh, because we want to, we want to preserve the standard azimuth, which says that you know the zero zero direction is north. So we could fix all of this by making the y-axis uh, north by um, by using a ninety degree transformation, a rotation. But I guess um, yeah, I guess just to be w w consistent, this the green axis needs to be the x-axis. Uh, this needs to, hang on, x-axis, up is the y-axis, x cross z, uh, z cross x, z cross, oh man, z cross x is negative y, x cross, no, hang on, x cross y should be z. So if this is x, ooh, um, this is x. 
Yeah, this has to be the positive y-axis. So x, y, z. Okay, so totally my fault there for forgetting how to, uh, how we're going to be doing our um, altitude azimuth. We're not going to make the y-axis north. It does seem natural, but if you're going to convert from spherical to x, y, z coordinates, uh, we want the azimuth to match the real life azimuth where zero it is zero degrees is, is north. So let's see what this does. So I guess this is just going to be this. Very, very sucky of me to not have gotten that right. And now let's see what happens. Good, do we have a zero for all this time? No, because it is actually GMST plus lawn that we want to rotate by. We will figure this out eventually. When I said we will figure this out eventually, I, I didn't mean that, apparently. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and really get more serious about cutting in. Let me go ahead and look at my uh, git, uh, git log, git diff changes between what we have now and the, uh, the previous uh, version here. Uh, that'll be on my other machine. Actually, we can do it here, too. I don't know how well it'll work here, but it should be okay. Um, uh, let's see, this will be BC Astro Formulas. And I think because I just pushed it, th there'll be no difference. We, ha we haven't changed it yet. Well, we haven't changed it by much. Also, I seem to remember this takes forever because we are over a secure shell drive. So let me go ahead and do this in the other machine. Alrighty. Okay, so there's nothing there. Well, actually, we just decided the whole thing was wrong, so we're not gonna not gonna go there. Okay, let's go ahead and do a little bit of work here. Um, if the if the sidereal time is zero hours, we still need to get, to get it to be overhead south, not north. So that's gonna be an azimuth of 180. So there, we need to do a 180 degree flip. If the um, Actually, do we need to do a 180 degree flip all the time? Mm, now let's find this out. Okay, so it's six hours. Um, if it's six hours, we have uh, the six hour line is already at the y axis, so we just need a negative 90 on that. Uh, this could be considered a negative 180. If it's 12 hours sidereal time, uh, we want the. Uh, then we don't need any change at all. 18 hours sidereal time. Uh, we want the 18 hours to go clockwise 90 degrees. Okay, hang on. So if it's six hours, we need a, oh, sorry, we need a plus 90 flip there because we have, um, if local side real time is six hours, the six hours normally starts off on the y-axis. We need it to go to the uh, southern axis to the south azimuth, which is 180 degrees, which is a leftwards rotation, a counterclockwise rotation of 90. For 12 hours, we're already there. For 18 hours, which is normally at the negative y-axis, we could call this um, a 270 degrees or a negative 90 degrees, depending on how you look at it. So the, uh, the um, rotation matrix here is going to be um, GMST plus this one. Oh, that's, that is local side real time. Um, so it's going to be, let's see, negative of the local sidereal time it appears, because this is negative, no it's not, it's pi minus, um, t, lovely, um, pi minus zero, pi minus 180 minus 90, 180 minus 180, 180 minus, uh, to 70, which is negative 90, so it is uh, pi minus uh, the uh, the local sidereal time. So I think this is what we're going for here. Okay, let's see if that's any closer. I think we we finally have nailed the azimuth portion of this computation. Yay! I should probably save this, but I won't. Um, now this is of course a very specific test here. Now the question is, is it in generically are they equal to zero? 
is this the same answer we're getting from RA deck, uh, you know, as the the this the function that we know works? Okay. Um, let's say given that lat goes to pi over two, is this true? And I don't know why it's taking so long. Oh, okay. Hang on. Arctangent minus. Yeah, this is this is looking really good. This, these are looking really really similar. Um, we're going to cheat a little bit. Instead of asking if they're equivalent, we're going to ask if their tangents are equal, which doesn't quite mean the same thing as them being equal, but it's very close. Um, obviously, we'll do some more testing as well. But this, if this could be zero, I'd be pretty happy. Mm-hmm. That does not look good. Okay. So one way to make sure it's broken is we're going to um, just once again say lat equals pi over 2, so 90 degrees, uh, and then we're going to choose other values. We're going to try to find a very simple value where it fails. Um, and also why it's taking so long. I think a lot of it is this matrix multiplication here. Um, or it just doesn't like me. Oh wait, 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 it's complaining about something. Expression 1 has no... It is probably zero time, but it's the first one, so we're gonna skip it. Um, Let's go ahead and do this again. Let's go ahead and delete all output. Run! Fuck. Um, there. Simplify that given conditions. I don't think that's right, actually. Okay. Simplify temp1 minus... Oh, this is, does not belong there. There. Okay. Okay, so it's not obviously equal to zero that it might be. Um, set the declination equal to zero, see if we can still get a failure there. This, by the way, would be on the equator of the um, of the uh, of this would be on the horizon of, at the North Pole. So, are these the same? I think these are the same. Th thing. Almost. Almost, almost. Um, Alright, so I'll set RA to be GMST plus LUN, and this, now it's it's going to work, but it's not going to do what, it, what, I, what we want. This is just going to be, like, 0 minus 0, or something. Yeah, that's not, that's not actually very exciting. Uh, let's go ahead and do it for a declination of... 45 degrees. This is much... Okay, good. Now let's do this for a uh, latitude of 30 degrees. Let's get more and more wild out there and s watch it break. Okay. Now let's do it for an RA, a right ascension, of zero hours. Yeah, here we go. Um, actually, I'm still not convinced that's not the same thing. Um, so let's go a little bit, let's say GMST is also zero, but the longitude is minus 80 degrees. And this should resolve to a, a, a number, basically. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that number is not equal to... Well, hang on. Is that number? Okay, well. Let's go ahead and numerically approximate it. I think it's not... It's, I don't think it's zero. It's going to be like minus pi or something. Let's find out.
clearly not zero, not even close to zero. So we need to figure out what we're doing wrong here. Um, Now, if we set the latitude to pi over 2, we don't have to worry about a y rotation. So it might... no, okay, that's bad. Even without a... Um, even without a y rotation, we have problems here. Okay. So, declination pi over 4, right ascension of 0, GMST of 0, minus 80 degrees. So... So I guess the question here would be, what are the two different answers? Uh, what are the uh, the answers giving us now? At minus 80 degrees, I would expect uh, the zero hour uh, to be, I think, to the left. Let's find out what the real answer is and what answer we're getting, and we're going to make our lives a little bit uh, easier here by saying we'll just use these cons as being. No, we can't use those. Sorry. Um, rup for replacement, and we're just going to call this the replacement, so we can change it pretty easily. Um, and now we just want to get the, uh, which one's the real one? T 1309 is the correct answer. Um, um, given REPL, let be careful here, so so it's simplify temp this one given REPL and because we want it in radians we want to see what the azimuth is in radians according to the actual formula and then according to I don't know why this is being like this these should be balanced and then same thing except this time according to our uh, new formula um, which is 1303, which is multiply the two things and then simplify them even further. Okay. All right, let's see what this does. The, the number minus 80 might be involved in some way. Ooh. And simplify given REPL close there. Actually, I think I can close that off after the degree, because that is we are, the degree is part of it. Okay, and we're waiting. Okay, so the actual, so this is actually a fairly obvious mistake here. We're getting the exact negative of what we want. So going back up here to our Z rotation, we want GMST plus ln minus pi, which maybe is correct. At this point I'm not gonna not gonna do any guessing here. Um, so if the LST is zero uh, minus pi still works. The LST at local side real time is uh, 90 degrees minus 90. So this is um, so this is okay this should not be correct but let's find out. This should not work. I mean, it will, because I just said it won't, but, um, yeah, that, that's working. Okay. So the obvious question now is, are these now actually identical to each other all the time? And if they are, we still need to worry about the latitude. But let's see what, what this is. So we'll still get the 100 and 100, and then the uh, horrible mess, okay. And then let's simplify this horrible mess based on our conditions. And okay, so we're still not necessarily seeing that these are equal. They are equal in this one case, which is good. Um, now, what if we make our latitude equal to pi over three or something? That's not 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 the North Pole because this could be reflecting a problem with our Y rotation which it apparently is so what if our latitude is zero that's a 90 degree shift uh, along the Y axis and I'm gonna bet you anything we're gonna get some sort of negativity going here um, those numbers add up to 180 
So now I'm going to look at our Y rotation and say, did we do this incorrectly? Which we might have. Um, so we wanted to rotate it so the latitude would come down to um, so that the North Pole is now mapped to uh, the, the um, 90 degree de declination is mapped to the latitude that you're at. Um, so let's see. So if you had a latitude of pi over 3, we'll leave that there. Declination of pi over 2, this should check at least to some extent the y rotation. Okay. Um, those both look bad. If I'm at latitude pi over 3, oh, I'm sorry, this is the azimuth and not the altitude. So the azimuth, again, we have um, 1 is 0 and 1 is y80, which strongly suggests that we have this rotation matrix incorrect. So we'll just do that, and this maybe will fix it. And I realize that you're saying, hey, just changing numbers and seeing what works is not a great way of doing mathematics. And you are correct, it is not. And I really should feel bad about it, but I don't. Okay, so the third one, which is the one we want to equal zero. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard. Let's see if the difference in the tangents is zero. Uh, because it's kind of hard to read with the arc tangents in there. Dun, 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 dun. Wow. Cosine of the declination times blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, so not happy. Well, let's see if we can find a place where it actually is different. Um, latitude, th so but this is fine. Now let's try declination of pi over 4. Let's watch that. That'll, that should break it. Interesting, it did not break it. And I guess the only question here is, do these things actually somehow end up canceling out? Because um, this is a minus, this is a plus. Um, I mean, you kind of, you kind of think they would. Um, hmm. The question is, okay, well, you know, if we're gonna be, if we're gonna be obnoxious, we might as well divide by cosine of declination, because that's the only. You know, and that's only zero at the at the poles. So, and let's see if that simplifies down to zero. Dun dun dun. No, it does not. And in fact, looking at that, I'm not even sure that that simplifies down to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some other numbers here. How about declination of minus pi over four? What does that do? Minus 45 degrees. Okay. So right now, it's looking pretty good. So now we're going to do something that's, you know, let's just set these. First of all, we're just going to set them to total random numbers. Uh, this will be between zero and one because that's how random numbers work. Later, we will make them more random in sense in the sense that we will. Um, in the sense that we will uh, make them be between zero and, you know, uh, negative pi and pi or whatever it is we need. So let's see if this is, what this if this is equal to the same answer, we're pretty confident that something is, that we're doing okay. And these are not, so the first time I do it, we nail it and get it wrong. Okay. Um... Okay. And I, I am sort of getting sick of doing the whole let's tweak numbers till they work because it looks like we might have a more fundamental problem with what we're doing. 
So let's see if we can find the Z-rotation matrix uh, correctly. Um, and so let's just let's just go over here and kill off all of this. I don't think you can tell Mathematica to stop evaluating somewhere. I, uh, let's see if we can, because we don't really need the rest of this right now. We will later. I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, I think it's it's just not going to let me. That's not the error it's complaining about. I think it is more like. Uh, um, let me check my mathematics to see if there really is an exit symbol. Oh yeah, so exit actually does terminate a Wolfram Mathematica session. Let me put in Z right here to see what happens. I mean, I really don't think this is going to work. But it would be great if it did. Well, okay. Okay, that's that's kind of cool actually. Um, so we can actually early abort if we have to. Okay, so what does Zrot do if we uh, take it to? Um, uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. What does it do to the? to the basically to the North Pole should not change it at all okay correct what does it do um, to the direction facing north which of course at the North Pole doesn't have much of a meaning but you know and it should change that level um, okay that is, I guess technically this is the, the, um, the XYZ coordinates, but I guess we do kind of want to go back from here to uh, spherical coordinates, because that is kind of what we're trying to do. Okay, and I think we probably need our conditions here. Where do our conditions go? Oh man, let's see if we can print out our conditions here. I think they still exist, but somehow they've disappeared from the... Yeah. Let's go ahead and get that... Let's get, go ahead and get that sort of... Exp oh, I think our cons come from BC Astro Formula, so we're fine. Okay, so we can say... Um... Okay, what should they do to the x-axis? You've got to be kidding me. Okay, I guess I'm going to say simplify under conditions. Okay. Um... This last number is one, uh, although we, would, we wouldn't have a way of knowing that. Um, yeah, this is not this is not very helpful. Um, okay, so we are trying now to to basically um, rotate so that the zero hour, which is at um, and we did decide that the hours increase counterclockwise. Uh, I think we looked at, um, wow, I am deleting stuff maybe way too fast. We did have a search on that. Um, and we did find some images and we found one that sort of confirmed there it is 
Um, really, really should maybe. All right. So as you go counterclockwise, the uh, right ascensions increase. And oh, the problem, of course, is with our azimuth as you go clockwise, uh, the azimuths increase. That is sort of the standard way of doing things. Okay, so that might be part of the problem. Um, so if you know the local sidereal time, okay, so if it's, uh, you want zero hours, okay. So if you want zero hours, it to be zero hours, the, uh, you know, going south, that's 180 degrees. If you want it to be six hours, that means you want the y-axis to now be at the um, um, at the negative x-axis. Now, the only thing we can think of is maybe that is not a. I keep saying that's a positive 90 degree rotation. That could be a negative 90 degree rotation. Um, because let's see, I'm losing my freaking mind. X, Y, Z is spherical of. Um, Zero, zero, one, that's the x-axis. No, it's not. That's the x-axis. And x, y, z, spherical of zero, one, zero. This should be, the second one should be pi over two uh, in terms of azimuth. Uh, and it is. Pomodoro time back in two and two. Okay, and we are back. So the last piece of the puzzle here is what does rotation, what does Mathematica's rotation actually do? Um, I had assumed it did the same thing mine did, but that may not be true. Okay. So if I say a rotation matrix of pi over two around the z-axis, uh, what does that do to the point one zero zero? Now, if it's counterclockwise, it will change the x-axis to the y-axis. If it is clockwise, it will change the x-axis to the negative y-axis. If my life has value, okay. So this is a counterclockwise rotation. Okay. Let's go ahead and write that down. Counterclockwise rotation. Okay. So, um, so if it's six hours sidereal time, the six hour line is normally the positive y axis. Uh, we need to get it to the south, which is the 100, you know, the negative x axis plus 90. 12 hours, if it's 12 hours sidereal time, it looks exactly the way it does here at 18. So this looks like it's correct. Um, so let's see here. We do have a little bit more going on here. Um, 
So LST minus pi. So this is LST is zero, minus pi is fine. Um, this six hours plus 90. Um, so that's 180 minus zero, 190 minus 90, 180 minus um, 180, 180 minus 270, it's negative 90, which is 70. So it is pi minus the uh, s the local sidereal time. Um, and the local sidereal time is the Greenwich Mean Standard Time plus the longitude. Okay, so this should be the correct Z matrix. Um, I don't think the simplification is working, but let's try it again. It's thinking. Okay, something's wrong. Let's go ahead and wipe out the output. Okay, nothing's happening. Come on, run. If they're doing more fucking uh, maintenance that they call scheduled, someone needs to get hurt. Me, probably, but still, someone needs to get hurt. All right, let's go ahead and use their evaluate cells. Oh, that, that did something. Okay. Arctan of blah, blah, blah. Okay. Where does this Arctan actually end? Right there? Comma zero, and the last one's one. Uh, but the fact that the second one is zero, um, this is the altitude is zero. This is the azimuth is it looks very much like this is negative tan. So it is just negative the um I think this is correct. I mean I'm I'm just saying that now and I don't really know, but okay. So now we're gonna be more careful in our testing. Uh we have our Z rotation matrix that we think is correct, but we don't know. Um Now I just want to make sure longitude goes the way I think it does. It might not actually. Well, does longitude go in the right? Ooh, longitude maybe increases counterclockwise, which is fine. That should be fine. Okay. So now we're going to try it on a very simple, um, without a Y rotation. We're going to try this versus, well, let's go ahead and get our uh, right ascension declination function. Um, so do this. Maybe we'll give it a better name. Um, we'll call this tradition, trad for traditional answer. Um, and we will make our, our, our REPL, which is our list of replacements for the various values, uh, we'll make it equal to this first and then we might change it later. Okay. Um, so I guess the very first question we're going to ask is, um, now here we're just t testing the azimuth, so I think we're going to leave latitude at pi over 2, and minus 80 degrees is sort of a nice random number there. Okay, so we're going to say, given the traditional, give us the REPL. This is going to give us the, um, we're going to be a little bit careful. What it's going to give us here is the, uh, the azimuth and altitude, but not the number one. So we cannot apply uh, spherical XYZ on it. 
Um, and actually, we probably don't have to, so that's fine. Okay. Then we're going to take the Z rotation and multiply it by the... Um, um, go ahead and use this. Do we... Um... Um, we're going to do the Z rotation. Um, to the, let's see, circle the river. Circle the XYZ coordinates of the right ascension and declination given REPL and see what happens. Not a damn clue. Okay. So traditional followed by, let's go ahead and put an exit in here. I know there's two exits now, it's, it's okay. Every room should have at least two exits. Well, where am I getting all this other crap now? Oh, right up here. So don't want this, don't want this, don't want this. Um, the only thing I want to know now is what happens when I do it with the Z rotation. Um, something tells me this is not going to work. Um, yeah, because I need to assign LL, because um, my rotation matrix my Z rotation matrix is um, given 1250, which is converts the longitude and latitude uh, into these funny things. Let's not do that for right now. Let's 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 leave those off for right now. Okay, and see if we get similar or the same answers. Mm. And once again, I messed that up because, of course, I meant to say spherical of to X, Y, Z of R, A, Decan 1 because that's the artificial radius that we have. Third time's a charm. Okay, well that's the X, Y, Z, so this is good. This is the actually the, um, well the traditional one will give us degrees, this will give us X, Y, Z vectors. So we do need to change here back to um, spherical. And then we should have an almost match, except the last of one of them will be one, and the last of the other will be... Um, This number actually is, uh, let's see, yeah, cosine 10 plus sine is, that actually is, um, that actually is um, equal to uh, equal to zero, or, or equal to one, rather. Um, so now, I think here we can say, cons, although th these are hard numbers, so I don't know if they're going to actually simplify that well. This does. I'm tempted to say these numbers are the same. Because um, this is 10 plus pi over 2. This is minus 10 minus pi over 2. Those are not the same. Well, let me go ahead and take a, a numerical estimate of them and show you that they're not the same. Uh, although they're not. They're negatives of each other. I don't think they're negatives in a way that makes them uh, equal, like pi, negative pi and pi are the same angle, but I don't think in this case this is true. Mm. Yeah, those are not the same angle. Oh, wait a minute. They are not the same angle, but mm, 
let's see how far off they are. I don't think they're plus and minus 180 degrees. If they are, then that is the same angle. And in fact, these, these, these might be plus and minus 180 degrees. No, they're plus and minus 100, clearly not the same angle. By the way, this is only looks funny because this is 1 divided by degree. This is the number of uh, degrees in one radian, but it's not important to us. We don't really need it. We're just uh, that sort of unimportant to us. That's the, uh, the radius, which we assume is 1. And we're dividing by degree, which makes it not 1, but whatever. Okay, so the rotation matrix here is incorrect. Now, the only thing I could see here is we can negate this. Um, but there might be something more fundamentally wrong here. Uh, let's take a look. Um, so this is longitude of minus 80 degrees, so this new rotation matrix becomes 180 minus minus 80, which is 260. And is that what we want? Um, the local si if the Greenwich Mean sidereal time is zero, the um, the local sidereal time at minus 80 is minus 80 degrees. Um, so what we would want is the um, a rotation of less than a hundred. The rotation about let's see, uh, if you're at minus 80 and you want the uh, local sidereal time is minus 80. Um, and our numbers are counting upward, so you actually want a, a rotation of 260 degrees. Um, so this is minus 80, 180 minus minus 80. That is a correct rotation. Um, I'm missing something here, obviously. Um, So how is the x-axis, which represents the zero hour, that should be going to, according to me, that should be going to, because um, it's a it's a counterclockwise is the way it's going, right? Yep, counterclockwise. So if we do a counterclockwise rotation of 180 minus minus 80, 260, the zero hour should end up at. Um, you know, 260 degrees, which should end up like near east, I think, is what we're doing. Uh, and that's what happens. But, according to this function, let's see what this function is all about here. So the right ascension declination of 0 minus pi over 4 latitude is at the North Pole, longitude is minus 80, and we're using Greenwich Mean Standard Time as whatever. This is my, so this is, um, so what would we expect the, uh, I guess the other question is in RA deck lat long GMST to AZ alt, have we also, um, no, we must have preserved uh, the standard directions of rotation because otherwise um, we wouldn't be able to use spherical to XYZ, which we do all the time. So this says, um, Okay. Um, now, of course, the one slight problem is that the North Pole, there is no um, every direction is south. Um, so let's try this at latitude zero. I don't expect any better results, but let's see what happens. And that didn't work at all because, of course, uh, we need the Y rotation in there as well. Okay. So, so far, pretty damn sucky. Uh, let's see. And another way to do this, of course, is to see what answers uh, this gives us for the x, y, and z axes and um, just create the matrix that way, which is not very exciting, but it might actually work. So we could say this, okay, 
So the x-axis here, we're going to be a little bit careful. The um, x-axis here would be uh, 0, 0 for right ascension and declination. Uh, let's see, is that true? Yeah, actually the, um, yeah, right ascension 0, declination 0. The latitude and the longitude, um, <coughs> excuse me. So the lat, lon, and GMST are going to determine the actual results. And the GMT is actually, it's really just lon, um, GMST plus lon, but, but whatever. Okay, and so we want this, we're going to define this to be temp 1839. Um, so we do this, actually that, that is what we want, so let's go ahead and print it out. So arctan of that, which very much looks like it should be um, that's kind of strange. Okay. And so we want our all right, Pomodoro, back in two and two. And we are back. And I guess the only thing I'm thinking again here is we have a disconnect between clockwise and counterclockwise. So in addition to a Z rotation, we need some sort of flip, um, which is cannot be modeled by rotation. And and I think that's it. Because in the right ascension declination scheme, uh, 6 hours is 90 degrees left of 0 degrees. And 6 hours is 90 degrees. And in azimuth, um, 90 degrees is to the right of, of uh, 0 by 90 degrees. So that is our problem. I don't think there is a rotational matrix that will do this that doesn't flip our axes. So, that's probably the problem. So, let's see here. Um, so, this is our Z rotation matrix. We now need to somehow... Um, there's lots of ways to flip this. Um, and... It's basically the identity matrix with a, with a negative one in it somewhere, uh, and probably at the z, you know, converting the z-axis to a, uh, to negative one. Um, 
so yeah I think that that's the problem we're having here is we um, our, our azimuth directions are clockwise our right ascension directions are counterclockwise and I and I actually have run into that before and I had forgotten about that so that that's where we're gonna have our problem here um, okay so that so there's no rotation in the world that can do that because it's a flip um, but I think that this is this is where it gets ugly the the identity matrix is basically one zero 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 one zero 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 one that's the identity matrix and all we have to do is put a negative one there is what I'm claiming and we should be good this will flip the z-axis it doesn't really matter which axis you flip uh, you just have to flip one of the damn things and now magic will not happen yeah because we we we're, we really limited ourselves here to pi over two indeterminate not what I wanted but okay all right so 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 this is not helpful because we know it's not a rigid rotation anymore I will however copy this down because I want to stop deleting important stuff something I've not done since the mid 80s so really kind of bad that I'm going back into that habit. This does, okay, we'll also keep this. We'll delete it, but we'll keep it. We'll delete from here, but we'll keep it in the file because it might be important. These things I'm sort of running on. I'll copy them too, just to be safe. Um, okay, so this is actually something we do need. We don't need to call it this, but we can call it this. Um, actually, maybe we should call it this. Okay. So now, I think what we said is we're going to try to replicate this, um, what this matrix, what this formula does. So we know that if you take temp 1839, oh, that's already, sorry, we already have the variables in there. Um, that gives us a azimuth and altitude. And we've got to be a little bit careful here because it does not give us back a radius, which is 1. But we want to say spherical to XYZ coordinates of... Um, I was trying to be clever by saying something like take temp 1839 uh, 2, but let's just go ahead and spell, spell it out. The first two coordinates of return from here and 1. So tell us what that takes the, uh, the x-axis to. And the answer here is there's something wrong. Um, but okay, that looks like a fascinating X Y Z coordinate system. Can we simplify that using our conditions? Um, actually, it doesn't matter if we can or can't. I mean. Oh, yes, we can quite a bit. Fantastic. Okay, so we want our um, one, sorry, one zero zero to go to this. So this is the first row of our, of our matrix. Um, which looks fine, actually. All right, so then the question is, where does this thing take? So that's the x-axis. Let's go ahead and do, y and z are in, they're going to be redundant because by the, actually they might not be, because um, the right hand rule doesn't apply here because we're applying, a f we're flipping a matrix. Okay, so um, the right ascension now we're doing the y-axis is going to be pi over 2, declination is still 0 um, for any latlon GMST. Um, for uh, the z-axis, it doesn't matter what the right ascension is, the declination is pi over 2, and we do this. And then we, of course, ask for um, the simplified version here. This is sort of very ugly because we're sort of, um, we're just sort of taking the function and just building the matrix that way. We know it's a rigid rotation. 
uh, sorry, we know that it's a rigid transformation. Okay, so this is our matrix, basically. Um, uh, let's see. There's one problem with this, and that is right now we're still saying GMST, lawn, and lat, where we actually want to say, uh, you know, we want to replace lat with the blah, 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 blah. That we want to we want to use our um, our uh, our uh, Cartesian coordinates here. Okay, so this we can just call this row one, row two, row three, and. This is going to be our, our matrix zero, which I want in input form. And I probably can't do that, so I need to just say row one, row two, row two input form. Run. Be happy with life. There it is. Okay, so we're going to call this mat zero. Um, but doesn't convert spherical to XYZ. And honestly, I'm pretty sure I've come up with this matrix before. I, I think it might even be in this very, um, in this very, um, file. Um... Well, it's around here somewhere. Okay, so this is it. We're good. This is mat zero, the zeroth matrix. Uh, we want to correct it a little bit by changing the longitude and the latitude into um, cylindrical co into rectangular coordinates, uh, but I think that's not too hard. Um, so this is mat zero, and now we do want to run some tests here, I think, before we go too crazy. Um, actually, I want to get rid of row 1, row 2, row 3 as separate entities. I want to just call this mat 0 equals, and then I just want to be the, uh, the raw result that we have here. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, dun, dun. Okay. And now we can compare what mat 0 does to what um, RA deck blah 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 does. And for that we will need some REPLs. Yeah, we will we'll start with this one. This is not um, one of the more exciting ones, but you know. We take what we can. Do we have another REPL going up here? Uh we do not. Okay. Okay, so we gotta be a little bit careful. We we expect very similar results, but not I identical results. So N R A Oh actually this is just temp eighteen forty one given REPL and then MAT0 oh applied to the XYZ version of RA deck 1 uh, given REPL, what does REPL change for us? It changes, yeah, it, we still need to have some things that change. Okay. Um, but then we need to convert these XYZ coordinates back to spherical, and we can, we sort of need to ignore the last one, which should be one, but aside from that, we can ignore it. So, nope. Okay. Okay. So, if this works, we have a good start. Oh, hang on, I didn't mean 1841, I meant, um, yeah, we don't have that there, so let's just do this. I mean, in theory, we could just put these parameters in, but um, then we'd have to kind of change stuff. So this is just going to be RA deck lat lawn GMST, given the conditions we have there. All right. 
Now let's see what happens. Still wrong. Just wow. Um. I'm stumped. Um, um, since we're not using any of these anymore, I don't think we can get rid of them. Um, but first, we'll copy them just in case we need them. I'm not stupid. Well, I am, but I'm not that stupid. Okay. So why don't we test it on the known... Um, So we know that they work at RA deck zero zero because that was one of our test cases. Again, not looking really super good. Um, no, we are going to azimuth and altitude, which is in the correct order. Um, And this should actually work even without specifying latitude and GMST and all that crap because this was a general condition that we did. And the only... no? Okay. And except for the third parameter, which is, uh, um, I'm stumped. I mean, <sighs> okay. I think the only difference here is this is a three element because we have the um, we have the the radius included as well. Is the radius equal to one? I mean, it should be, but hmm. I guess it's not because we don't know for the we don't have the uh, the condition on the. Um, And then show me the difference between them, which should be zero, zero. But at the rate we're going, it will not be. I guess we don't need to end these if we're going to be doing like this. What bugs me here is we have a sign lat that we don't have here. Well, did I get my row one and row three mixed up or something? Okay. This is going terribly badly. Um, okay, so we'll just do this with zero zero that long GMST. And then we will do a... We did this, though. This is ridiculous. So that's what you get when you, um, when you take the, um, basically the x-axis, which has theta and phi both equal to zero, send it through RA deck, and then we convert those spherical coordinates back to xyz coordinates. Um,
and that should be the first frickin' row of our... That's where the x-axis goes. So, oh, 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 oh. Um, I think that's right. Let's see, so the, um, the x-axis... Image of the x-axis, image of the y-axis, image of the z-axis. Um, and I'm trying to... Boy, if, if I got this in the wrong direction, I'll be really embarrassed if it's... The x-axis is the first column and not the first row. Um, well... Boy, they... of orthonormal unit vectors. Um, this is... Oh, it's PDF for one thing, so it's worthless. There we go. The transformation matrix... Blah, 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 blah. Um, examples, examples in three dimensions. In 3D computer games. Oi. Reflection. All right, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are back. And I did screw that up. It is, in fact, the columns that are the basis vectors. I just did the math in my head, actually. Believe it or not. And I wouldn't, given my reputation right now. Okay. So this would be the first column of my matrix. So basically, we do, oh, and we do want to simplify it. To the extent possible, we also want to make things as slow as possible. So this is really, really bad on my part, by the way. So this is going to be column one, the transformation of the, um, of the x-axis. Then we'll just do this twice more. And the y-axis will be, the RA is going to be pi over 2. 90 degrees. And here, interestingly enough, we could reuse these names, but I'm not going to. Because once they're assigned, they're not reused. They're like variables in most languages, where if you reassign it, the reassignment is only from then forward. However, and the z-axis is the um, declination of 90 degrees. So this will be, call it t doesn't really matter, but we'll call it t15.9 to be, um, to be nice. And this will be called 3. And then, I, I can't use it like this, but here's what it's going to look like, just for our, our little benefit here. 
This is what it would look like if I did it wrong. And now to turn those rows into columns, we use our magic function called transpose. So really, really quite, quite bad today. Okay. Yeah. And this I would like to get an input form. And I would like to and why does this look really, really similar? This looks too similar. Hang on. this down here. Um, that looks way too similar. Did I do something wrong? Um, wait, I've got two outputs here. Oh, this is not what I, the one I want. No, no. Let's see. We are still way up here because this is our first exit. I do not want this. I only want an input form. And I'm very suspicious of this result. Looks way too much like the result I had before. However, um, I'm going to pretend that looks okay. All right. Let's go ahead and test it out a little bit here. Um, so we are going to let mat0 be defined with this transpose for right now. We're not going to fix that. And now we're going to say the replacement is this. Okay, you got to be careful here. We want the azimuth and altitude with these numbers in there. Oh, actually, let's go crazy. Let's just do this. Um, sorry, I can't do that. So we just want the arbitrary uh, solution here, and the arbitrary solution here, and then the difference, which should be zero. It won't be, but it should be. Okay, it's unhappy with my REPL. Oh, yeah. Um, I do need to define it because I, but I'll define it as the empty set, no replacements whatsoever for right now. Okay, pretty damn ugly. Do they look similarish? It's interesting that this one actually decided to put a sine RA as a multiplicand, instead of using the sum and difference formulas. Okay. So I think we are okay with saying simplify this under the given conditions cons. Simplify this under the given condition cons. And now just go fuck yourself. Hey, 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 hey! Zero, zero. We have proved that this matrix um, now gives the same azimuth and altitude. Where the hell are we? This matrix gives the same azimuth and altitude. We got both of them as the... Um, as the RA deck lat long GMST to at yet. So we are solid now. Um, the only thing we need to do now is instead of having mat zero being composed like that, just give it as in this form that we have it in here, which better be the goddamn right form. Okay. Um,
And now, once more into the breach, my friends. We're still not done, but we're... We're not home and dry, but we're home and vigorously toweling ourselves off. Excellent. Okay, so now we're finally in the same answers of this damn matrix. The only problem here is we still have longitude and latitude um, as degrees and not as uh, not as vectors. So that is not hard to fix. I say that with such confidence. Um, let's see. So we want to convert... Um, X, Y, Z to spherical. Um, and we are going to go with LLX, LLY. I'm going to for right now say LLZ. I, I realize that, that we might at some point want to use square root of 1 minus LLX squared minus LLY squared. And it might actually become useful. But for right now, this is fine. Um, and so this is longitude, latitude, and the number 1 in disguise. Um, and it does occur to me All right, we do want to use LLZ here because at some point we will actually want to uh, treat the latitude as a function purely of Z and in fact um, In fact, we're gonna do that right now so the longitude becomes this um, Not too hideous thing here um, this. I don't know if I can... Do I want that input form? Can I get it into input form? Yes, I can. So I'm going to copy that, paste that up here. I'm not going to use it directly, obviously. Um, the longitude just becomes this sucker. And the latitude does not become this sucker, but we'll see why in just a sec. So th this is the latitude, but it's actually dependent on both uh, Z, X, and Y. It's dependent on all three of them. It doesn't have to be. And because LLX squared plus LLY squared is just another way of saying 1 minus LLZ squared, because this is a unit vector. Um, so it looks like that is the only changes I need to make here to this matrix. Is there anything else in the matrix that looks... GMS2 we're probably not going to be able to do anything with it. That's just a... it's an angle, but it's it's not one that has a, a corresponding other angle. Um, if we were clever, and we might be, we might actually make GMST plus lon um, equal to the local sidereal time and co just call it that. Um, uh. And if we did that, this would simplify a lot. So I'm really tempted to do that. Um. Mm -hmm. it's too many minuses here. Okay. I think maybe we'll just leave it at this for right now. And then we don't need that anymore. I would like to see mat zero given these fixes. It, we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit more here. I, we will need to simplify this because it's gonna get ugly. So I need to fix. I need to get rid of that. But this is the formula we have now. Not a very nice looking matrix, but a technically correct one. Let's. Um, Let's go ahead and simplify that, given our conditions. And we probably need to add some more conditions. But first things first. And then second things second. Get rid of that. Do this. And let's see what our matrix looks like with linear... with. Ooh. Not fantastic, but not really that bad looking. And here we could say mat1 uses a rectangular lat long. Rectangular lat long. Not long. Mat1 equals blah. Okay. 
So why have we come through all of this to get here? What is it the improvement that we're going to make? And the answer here is, assuming we've done everything right, which at this point I believe we actually have, um, and assuming we don't want to use, well, sh yeah, we can do lots of other things here, but let's stop here for a second and say, so what is this mat one good for? This matrix that, uh, that lets us convert um, right ascension and declination to azimuth and altitude in a purely rectangular form. What have we accomplished here? Uh, aside from the fact that I'm going to cut and paste this because I've got to be careful here. Because if we have another mat zero here, I can't let that go. Okay. Uh, I really need to clean, well, to, to, to do, really clean up this file. And thanks to Git, I could just push it and then clean it up and not worry about getting rid of too much. So what, is, what have we ac accomplished here? What have, what have we done here? Let's go ahead and put Matt one in here. Um, so what we're saying here is, if you take the right ascension and declination, given as a as a cylindrical coord, uh, given as rectangular coordinates, um, R A X, R A Y, R A Z, what you end up with is. Uh, azimuth altitude x, azimuth altitude y, azimuth altitude z. And we're going to go ahead and print it out here. There we go. Which, by the way, can also be interpreted as um, um, as three separate equations. Because these are linear equations, kind of, it should be easier to... So this is the relation we know always holds. Um, this is the same as what we had before in, in, um, in spherical terms. So this is the relation that between right ascension, declina right ascension and declination, latitude, longitude, and azimuth altitude, given as a rectangular relationship. So the question is, I don't know the answer to this, what if we wanted to get the uh, latitude? Can we solve this relation for LLZ? And the answer is no. That's not cool. Um, hang on one second here. I am wondering if this relation is maybe too complicated to be considered a natural relation. What is relation one here? Um, yeah, that might be a bit much. Um, I don't think relation has two elements. It's going to should come. Oh. Oh. Uh, 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 so this is actually not what we want. So one second here. Um, so this is just the output of this matrix, this multiplication, which is ugly. Okay. But we can now say that out one, sorry, out one, equal equals uh, AAX. That is one of our relations. Is that really? Oh yeah, this is a much easier relationship here that we want. Um, so we can call that rel one. Rel two is equal to Two equal equal a y and rel three. If I can get it correct, come on, return. Wow. Is lets us know that the um, and just be happy. We're going to put these in parentheses. I don't think we need them, but anyway. So this tells us that uh, each element of the new vector, the translated vector, is equal to what it's supposed to be equal to. Um, Okay, so now the question is, can we solve rel1, rel2, rel3 all together for, I don't know, the, sorry, the latitude. Uh, 
Okay, it does not seem to think we can do that, which is almost definitely not true. Sort of an ugly workaround here. Can we solve one of them for the latitude? Okay. So here, just knowing the first coordinate of the azimuth, I'm sort of surprised we can get this out of that, but um, there are two solutions uh, apparently to LLZ. One is the positive and negative of each other. That depends on the uh, azimuth, the right ascensions, x, y, z, coordinates. Um, now, I'm wondering if we can use the first two together. What the hell? Okay. And is that going to... No, see, it doesn't like that. Can we use rel 1 and rel 3? And I think it's going to complain again that we cannot do that. I bet you anything we could use rel2 by itself and get a really bizarre looking answer. No, we can't. rel3? The z equivalents? Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, Pomodoro back in 2 and 2. And we are back. Now, we can definitely use the inverse matrix here, the inverse of um, at 1, to convert azimuth and altitude back into right ascension and declination. However, that's sort of the uninteresting case. So let's see here. OK. So we can solve for latitude. Uh, I mean, it's hideous, though. I don't think we've gained anything at all. I guess we can do a simplify here real quick on under conditions, but I actually, actually, I don't think we have any conditions to simplify under. Um, okay, so we have not very exciting here. Can we solve rel1 for LLX? And actually that doesn't help us at all because we need LLY to um, yeah. Um, how about LLX and LLY? No, we cannot. Okay. So let's go back over here and solve for LLZ. But we'll limit our domain to the reals. Conditional expression. What is the condition here? I 
I'm hoping the condition is something else. Let's just go ahead and freaking show everything. The condition might be something that, that is necessarily true anyway. But still, very hideous. Have I... Um... Although, to be honest with you, I think this is... I don't think we've actually gained anything here. Quite sadly. The only sort of nice thing is we can take the inverse of matrix 1 and convert, um... convert RA and declination back to, uh, you know... convert azimuth and altitude back to RA and declination. Um... given latitude and longitude. But this is not exactly what I had in mind. So this is... This is ugly. Um, and I'm not even sure we can really decompose matrix one into a multiplication that uh, you know sort of involves L L L L L X L L Y L L Z. Um, so I, I don't know how useful this is. Okay. So it's really not happy with me right now. Let's go ahead and try it one more time here. Delete all output. <sighs> Solve this over the reels. And just show me what this would be. LLZ would give me the, the latitude. For the longitude, I need both LLX and LLY. Uh, although, of course, if I get LLX to LLZ, we could get LLY out of that. Okay. Running, running, running. Actually, let's go ahead and say uh, evaluate cells. Uh, have I broken it? Okay, there. We did something. Evaluate all cells. Now it put a little green thingy here. Okay. Come on, baby needs new pair of shoes. Now it's at least it's doing a little blinky cursor thing. Um yeah, we're kind of stuck here. Now, in theory, if we did this using just the latitude and longitude, um, instead of converting them into XYZ coordinates, we might actually have something there. That might be, um, that might be easier to do, although it's still insanely ugly. Um, so let me go ahead and save this before I forget. And again, not the best way to save things here. And now we're going to use um, matrix zero instead of matrix uh, uh, matrix one, and see if this helps any. But this is clearly not the uh, the panacea that I'd hoped for. This is not the uh, the super solution um, that solves that makes everything easier. It's still pretty damn complicated to convert between uh, these things. The only hope is that using latitude and longitude as degrees, but using everything else as um as as rectangular coordinates somehow magically uh does what we need and honestly if you believe that i've got swampland in new mexico to sell you because we don't have a lot of swampland that would be the joke um All right, delete all output. There isn't any. Okay. So either I've broken something, or they've broken something, or they're just sick to death of me. Because um, it does not appear that this is an error. It just appears they're just not going to do it. Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and do a, um, this, which never helps, restart session. All this really does is bring up this little wolf dude. Okay. Oh. That was actually pretty good. So delete all output. Um, I don't, I, would, I do want to see my matrix. Well, actually, I probably don't want to see my matrix. So just show me rel3 to show me that you're still working. Come on. Is my system, eh, it's a little bit heavy, but not that heavy. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now, can we solve rel1 for latitude over the reals? The system cannot be solved with methods available to, well, fuck you. How about rel2? I get the feeling this is going to be the same. Oh good, there are no solutions. Not true, by the way. Rel3 cannot be solved. So this is... Well, let's go ahead and try Rel1 without the reals, because sometimes it'll give us answers that are real. It, it's kind of stupid sometimes. Let's see what this is going to be really ugly, I think. So here you see the very simple formula that converts from motherfucking holy shit. Given that, oh, and then there's a plus two pi, obviously, but that's really, I mean, that's insane. Let's see what happens if we want to rel two for that. Nope, no solutions, but there are. Rel three. So we do get some solutions, but they're insanely complicated. Um... What can I tell you? Uh, if we really wanted to, we could try doing a power series or something. Um, but honestly, I don't see that this formula is any easier than the ones we had when we were using pure angles. Um, the, um, I guess the only thing I see that might help us here is if we broke mat zero into three different uh, matrix multiplications, uh, one which was the rotation, one which was the flip, and the third of which was the, the spin around the y-axis. Um, because those are actually based on, um, one is based on longitude, the other is based on latitude, the flip is the flip, and we might be able to come up with some sort of matrix equation uh, that says how we get back to um, how we get back to longitude by uh, looking at the results, invert, invert matrix, um, yeah, somehow try to find the matrix that is the, you know, anti-rotate that matrix. O honestly, I think that's going to be just as much, uh, that's going to be as much work. So in other words, if we had, well, we might try it anyway. Um, so the way we came up with mat zero was through uh, doing three transformations. One was a, a rotation around the z-axis, the other was a flip, the third was a rotation around the y-axis. Um, and one was based purely on latitude, one was based purely on longitude, the flip was based on nothing. So what we really have is that we could say the chain of matrices here does this for you. It converts um, right ascension and declination to azimuth and altitude. Um, so if you had the right, if you could sort of multiply your inverse matrices correctly, it would still be a freaking nightmare. Um, I, I really don't see how you would, well, okay, you might be able to m multiply a vector by its inverse matrix um, on the right side or something. Um, okay. Why do I keep doing this to myself? Okay, so uh, we might be able to do something like mat um, x y z um, inverse. I think it's matrix inverse actually. Uh, no, 
oh, and actually, I think for we actually need matrix to be an actual matrix. Um, I I don't think it's going to let me. Um, yeah, invert complete. Okay, show me the functions that you can do with matrix. JSONC matrix. Um, view matrix, disk matrix, rotation matrix, relativity matrix. Uh, for oh, those are ones I created actually. Um, identity incidence plot three D. I think it's just called for some reason it doesn't have a matrix name. It's like just called invert or something. Okay, maybe it's in verse. Anytime it's ready. I think inverse is the inverse matrix. Don't actually tell me or anything, but you know. There, oh, gives the inverse a square bit. That's fine. Yeah. So it is inverse that I'm looking for. Unfortunately, I don't think I can do this unless I define matrix to be a matrix. Uh, which I can do. Which I can do. Um, and the idea here is this might be one way to exhume, as it were. Um, To how to get back our latitude and longitude. So this actually should work. Mm, you are correct, it does not. And in fact, this should be a table. Okay. Table. I don't think I need this one here. Hey, hey, hey! Okay. This should simplify down to... Let's find out. This should simplify back to... I, I could be very wrong about this. Okay, so that's just the matrix, and the simplification here is not what I expected. Uh, unless this is in some weird way equal to XYZ. And... Oh! Okay. Actually, I think because we're, we're doing the uh, multiplication in the other direction, it has to be the transpose of the inverse of the matrix. And that w does... Uh, whoa! There it is! That's what I meant to do. Yeah, that's a ticket. John Lovett's there. Um, yeah. Below does give back XYZ. Okay. So the reason that's important is it means we can we can sort of get rid of multiple mul we can get rid of multiple matrix multiplications one at a time. Um So if we can figure out how we built up mat zero, which I think I think we actually do have that. So um, yada yada yada. Um, did we actually ever do that rotation matrix? Um, I mean. We could try to, um, Jesus Christ, we could try to decompose matrix um, mat zero here by saying, um, whew, brother, 
So we have rotation matrix of, we'll call it angle Z for Z, dot the rotation matrix of angle Y for Y, dot the matrix that is the flip matrix, which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1. All those together give us something. Um, and why am I not getting that? Because it's not called rotation matrix, it's called rotation matrix, because it's m a function they define. And then set that equal to mat zero is what we're, we're going with this. Um, and actually, we do not need this anymore. And we do not need this wonderful proof of matrix transpos transposition. Inversion and trans for the baboji, yo mama. Okay. So. Okay. All right, Pomodoro, back in two and two. And we are back. And so the idea here is, I think this is correctly aligned, uh, is that we can make this matrix look like this matrix. Oops. Or we can hit the wrong button. Okay. All right, so here's this matrix. Um, actually, we do want to see mat zero. Okay, so not quite there, but let's look carefully. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so let's just, com well, let's call, call this RT, the rotation matrix. So for some values of angle y and angle z, we claim this is going to be equal to mat zero. And actually, that might not be true, but let's find out. So I think we can actually just do one comma one. We don't need to put uh, as much crap into it. So let's compare the top left element of the two. It's always a good start. Then we, there's nine elements that are effectively are going to be in this matrix. Um, so not looking super great because we have here a, uh, a cosine and a sine. Obviously we can flip that so that a negative cosine here, again that uh, cosine is not, is an even function so making this negative won't help. We could add pi over 2 to it so that's not a huge deal. Um, 
And of course, we could make this, we could turn this, these into co functions. We could make this uh, cosine of, uh, not, you know, pi over 2 minus ands, which would be sine of ands. But um, before we do any of that magic and try to get these matrix lined up, let's take a look at the uh, second element. The first row, second uh, column. So this is pretty. Um, what am I looking at here? Why are we looking at these? Right, we don't want to look at these whole matrices now because we just want to look at pieces of them. Okay. Great. Where the hell did they go? Okay, come on. Um, so minus sign. Okay, so this is again not looking too great. Um, because now we have the product of two signs trying to match up with a single sign. Um, and I think I know why, because I think we actually have to do the uh, the Z rotation first. Just like we, we sort of did that in our um, we sort of did that in our original attempt to get this correct. Uh, the Z matrix has to be first, then I think the flip, then I think the Y matrix. Oh, oh no, no dot there. Um, still not great. Um, and so this this is not fantastic. Um, I'm almost sure we can't do it without the flip matrix. Um, and why don't we just call the flip matrix Flip Wilson? No, we'll just call it Flip. Dan oh Mike, that's not Flip Wilson. That is, I think, from Good Times. JJ Walker, maybe? Don't remember. Okay. This still could be wrong. We still could be off. We still could be flipping the wrong. This could be a negative one here. So this is not necessarily correct. Okay. We're getting closer. And and the goal here is going to be that we will have to change one of these, like pi over two minus uh, angle, which which I think it's okay because we we kind of had that. So I think where we're doing our n and y flip. That's not cool. Mm, damn it! I thought I had it. Because for our n z flip, I'm almost sure we want we want pi over two minus n z. Because we're flipping it so that the uh, the North Pole is uh, like at 10 degrees north latitude, it's 10 degrees high, so it's an 80 degree flip. So let's see if this looks any better. Um, no, it does not. All right, well, let's look at the... Um, we might actually... Let, yeah, let's go ahead and be a little bit more... Um, let's look a little bit more at once. Let's look at the first rows of both matrices. Uh, and I think I probably do not want to do that on the same line. I think this should give us two separate results. There we go. So the first row of the matrix, this is the matrix we actually knew is correct. This is the one we're trying to get to match this one. Uh, cosine, sine of lat, sine of lat. Ooh. So really that's not that close. Um... Cosine, cosine, cosine. So, so really, not at all close at all. Um, okay. So we do a uh, pi over two minus z over there. We do a flip, which I'm almost sure we need to do. I don't think we can get away with that. And maybe we can make this a minus y one. Flip around the negative y-axis. Um, we're close on that one. Not at all close on that one. Not at all close on that one. And in fact, it looks like our angle Y and our angle Z are being like totally not combining correctly. Uh, I mean, here they are. Cosine, what we hope is something like a longitude sine of what we hope is a latitude. 
Here we're saying minus cosine of longitude, cosine of latitude, but they are saying minus sine of latitude, sine of g. So these are, um, and here we're totally off because this is our longitude and this is our latitude. So this is, uh, this is just weird. Um, now I know what you're thinking. Um, can we solve these equations so that uh, everything is equal to everything else? In other words, can we solve RT equals equals mat zero uh, for A and Y and A and Z? That's a good, damn good question. Um, glad you asked it. All right, so can we solve? I don't, I don't think we can, by the way. But who knows? And I think it's just going to say there is no solution. Oh. Holy shit. Okay, so there is a solution. Oh, hang on, but that involves... Um, yeah, we can't force the latitude and longitude to be anything. We, we need to solve it um, for any y... <laughs> angle y and angle z only. Whoa. That I did not expect. That's not that's not bad at all actually. We can do that. So this is the arctan of minus sine over cosine, which is minus tan, arctan of minus tan is the angle, maybe the negative of the angle. Um Arctan of this minus this is negative GM with the, the latitude, longitude. Um, oh, yes, because the angle Z is actually the flip for the longitude. Angle Y is flip for the latitude despite, um, despite where, yeah, so this is actually, sorry. So this should actually be an angle Z uh, rotation for uh, local sidereal time. This is the one that should be pi over 2 minus. Because um, it's angle, it's really like the latitude, so. See what this does. Um, we're so close. And conditional expression. That that conditional expression is fine. This one a problem. Angle Z is. We're off by a negative sign. So cosine over this is well actually sorry this is cotangent. Arctangent of cotangent is one over negative and. One over the uh, we're so close. I can taste blood. Okay. So maybe we shouldn't have broken that. Um this is <laughs> that's uh, arc that's the arc tangent of the cotangent. Um so we're we're basically just need to flip our variable somehow. Um, I mean, I guess we could just use what they're saying here. Um, what is the arc tangent of the cotangent, and the arc tangent of the negative cotangent? Well, let's find out. Tell me, arc tangent of the cotangent of x under most circumstances. Oh, come on! <laughs> um, assuming x is a real number, that should simplify. Come on, really? The arctangent of the tangent should just be x, unless you're going to be real... It's good being pedantic about this, because... Um, this is actually only true if x happens to be between like negative pi and negative pi is less than x, x is less than pi. Um, it, it just hates me. Um, oh, actually I think it has to be negative pi over 2 because this is, these are tangents we're talking about. Um, some condition like this will force the issue. There we go. 
And now we can also get cotangent of x, which is not 1 over x, except it's going to be, isn't it? Damn it! These people hate me. Okay. Enough of that. Okay, so we're very close here. Uh, I think we can finish up um, now. Um, or, of course, we just use this. Octangent. Yeah, hey, blah, blah, blah. Hang on. It's just too much. The, uh, yep, 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 yep. Oh, and I think this is actually pi minus 2 over x, is what this ends up becoming. Um, because it's the, it's the co-angle, so this should become 70 degrees. Or I meant 20 degrees, of course. Wait. The arc tangent of... Oh, shoot! Because, I forgot, this is the y-coordinate. So this is y over x. So this is actually exactly lat. And this is... so fucking close to being GMST plus lawn. So this is fine the way it is, this is fine up to a minus sign. Whew. All right. So now let's look at our row one of RT and row one of our um, the real matrix and see how close we are. Okay. Yeah, so the only thing we have here is a slight flip in um, um, GMST plus lawn, if we, that's angle Z. Um, that minus could have been spit out there, so that's fine. And um, sign, sign, minus sign, ooh. Minus cosine and cosine. So for the latitude, for the angle y, we're we're off by a little tiny bit. If we wanted to be lat. Um, I don't want to say a flip of negative one. I want to say a flip of angle y minus pi over two. And that should be what I need. Okay. Still not so. A and Y is going to be the the longitude. Um, no, sorry, A and Z is going to be the longitude because it's a flip around the Z axis. Not quite there. There. And A and Y is going to be the flip that's based on latitude. So A and Y latitude. A and Y latitude. A and Y latitude. Um, so literally, we are one step away. We need one fix to A and Z uh, to make this work. Uh, that doesn't break. So A and Y we're solid on, it looks like. A and Z. Uh, Yeah, we're not quite there. Of course, this is just the first row. Let's take a look at the second rows. These matrices will be equivalent if it kills me, which it probably will. Um, the zeros match up nicely. A and Z matches to this. Again, in the first coordinate, we are off, which kind of makes me think that the flip is maybe unnecessary. That scares me. Or maybe we just need to flip the x-axis, which should be the same thing, though. But hey, I am not one to judge. I am one to 
Um, no. Not the right flip. Okay, what if we make flip the identity matrix? This won't work. In fact, this should be an unsolvable problem right here. Um, so if I put this back into solution, we would see there is no... Um, oh. Yeah, there is no solution to this. Because the flip is necessary. Um, do we need to flip around the y-axis? I don't think so. But you never know. Um, okay, so the, the what we flipped here is the the angle is now the negative of what it should be. Although that's really, really close to what we want. And cosine is an even function, so flipping n with, co uh, with negative n won't work. Instead, we need to do some sort of pi minus 2 manipulation here for angle of z. Mm, which is weird, because that does not seem like the correct thing to do. Okay. Um... There, you got a pop-up from someone, which you probably can't see, I hope. Yeah, good, because otherwise it would be very dangerous. It is the evil pop-up of doom. All right, it is Pomodoro time. I will be back in two and two. Excuse me. And we are back. Okay, so we're pretty close here. Um, yeah, angle Z. And we're so close, at least in this second row. Let's actually look at the first row again. Um, mm-hmm. Very, very close. Yeah, it does seem like an y needs some sort of pi over 2 correction here. Um, well, what if I remove this pi over 2 correction? I think that's going to break things, though. And we probably do not need the rest of this right now. Because of what we're trying to do. Okay. Cosine over sine, that's perfect. Sine over, not quite perfect. Okay. So the first rows here are, if angle Z is the this, angle Y is that. Ooh, so now we've really broken it. Um, the angle Y, which is the latitude transformation, has suddenly become a sine. Not cool. Um, so maybe it's plus Y over this 
Some of this doesn't really make sense, but I mean, we are we are flipping, so that might have something to do with it. Um. So minus so n y is the latitude. N y is not quite the latitude. Okay, so we're back in the, at least in the correct territory or area. So the angle z is the uh, is the flip for the latitude. No, is the flip for the longitude. Correct here. Not correct here. And not relevant here, which is good. Um, okay. So I think the only way this... R I don't think you can flip around the y-axis, to be honest. I think you do have to flip around the z-axis. That is where we, we're getting our... Okay. Minus. So these are both like... Arctan of negative tan. Arctan of negative tan. Ah. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and do that, but I, I'm pretty sure that's just going to be a very trivial sort of thing. Arc tan of negative tan of x is not going to simplify. Yep, I knew it. But let's do a power series with it, son of a bitch. Let's see how you like that. Because you're going to see the power series actually declines very quickly. Um, negative x, yeah. Um, so basically they just both need to be negatives of each other, I mean of what they are right now. That seems almost too easy. And yet, it's so easy it might just work. Oh, it did, it did just work. Okay, that was kind of surprising. I'm not sure how we got that, but okay. So. Let's take a look at the second rows. That first rows are looking pretty good now. Um... Well, the fact that these conditions are now correct is making me very happy. Um, yeah. Okay, so the only thing left to do now is become um, and z is going to be the GMST plus the longitude. Or the local sidereal time, as it were, and A and Y is going to become the latitude. And that, this doesn't make sense anymore. And now what we want to know is RT minus mat zero. Give us a bunch of zeros now, please. Hello! Booyah! Fucking done. Um, we still don't have latitude and longitude in uh, uh, re rectangular form. Um, uh, in fact, we're going to paste them both to just so we have it, or we can not have it. So this little piece of code here proves that they're equal. Okay, so why does that help us any? Ooh, ooh, not this one. Why does it help us any? Because now we can actually say that the um, the matrix that does the conversion uh, is actually a composition of three matrices that if we wanted to, we could sort of decompose from each other and find things potentially um, from, from that. Um, So if we had the RA and the declination, we would know that RDX, RDY, RDZ equals this horrendous thing times 
the um, no, I'm sorry, azimuth altitude would equal this horrendous thing times um, ra dec, you know, the, the ra vector. And then, in theory, we could do left and right multiplication until we came up with the latitude and longitude. And we could maybe do some other stuff here. I think this is actually pretty good. Um, Um, the only thing that we could maybe improve about this, I'm not even sure it would be an improvement really, um, let's see, rotation matrix minus n z, that's fine, is here, sort of saying, well actually minus that minus pi over 2, we could of course change that to be the, um, the z coordinate, the arc sine of the z coordinate of latitude longitude vector I'm not actually sure that would help us any this might actually be pretty pretty good stuff here okay so now that we have this uh, the rotation matrix is equal to this um, we also know of course by definition the mat zero of a a x a a y a a z um, nope are right okay it converts the right ascension and declination to the azimuth and altitude. That's what it's supposed to do. So, so we could now, so mat zero is the same thing as if we call this, okay, a little bit careful here. Let's call this R lat. Um, because it's, it's the matrix that involves the latitude even though it's Okay, we can call flip is flip, I like flip. Our lawn, which is actually involves GMST, but that's not a huge deal. Um, is this matrix, slurring my words today. Okay. And flip is flip, so can't do anything about that. So, well, we don't want to do anything about that. So we could say rlat.flip.rlon um, which is the same thing as mat zero. So we have this. This is our given. And at some point we might want to call this like the RD vector and the AA vector so we don't have to write them out each time. Um, so the question is how can we get, if we know, if assuming we know everything else, how can we get the uh, latitude and longitude out of this sucker? Um, Um, so the inverse of the flip matrix is trivial. I think it's, it's, it's self-invertible, in fact. Um, so if we left multiply... Mm, okay. So this isn't quite where we need it to be. If we know the latitude, we can get the longitude here, no problem. I mean, just multiply by r lat inverse on both sides. Uh, left, left multiply r lat invert. I left multiply flip invert, um, which is not a big deal. And then we have r ln times this equals this. And then we just need to find the matrix um, that solves that. We need we find the matrix that solves that problem, and then uh, you know convert it from Arlon back to uh, back to uh, ladder back to longitude. So that would be the the plan here. Um, and to find the latitude, we would probably have to do a little bit more work. Um, I think we'd have to do the transpose of Arlon on the right. The transpose of the flip, which might still be the flip, um, and then we have just R lat times that, so we could say what what matrix matrix solves this equation, um, which doesn't sound right because there's more than one matrix that would do that. But I, th I think I think we have what we need here. I think we have sort of the fundamental 
of what we need here. Um, and I've been streaming for, I think, close to two and a half hours. Not that I care. Ooh. Ooh. Got something. Um, two and a half hours. So I think, thank you for watching the stream. Uh, I think from here we can proceed next time to finding some nice inverses that are not too ugly or at the very least are, are doable. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.